Let me tell you something, folks. I was involved in an organization firsthand as a member of the Whitehall Church of Satan in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And I'm telling you, one of their main agendas in that satanic organization was the propagation of androgyny. Masculinization of women, feminization of men. Emasculation of men and hypermasculization of women. To bring, into, to bring people into an androgynous pool from which they could be morally, more easily directed and manipulated. And if you don't think think tank mind control is behind that, and the occultists that work through these think tanks and these satanic organizations, you don't know what's going on on this planet at all. And all the people who want to cling to their religious garbage, dogmatic, belief, lie systems, okay, Buying into all those dogmatic lies about, you know, what religion is telling you is morality. They have no idea about the occult. and They're some of the most asleep people in the world. They don't understand how Satanism is run and works and operates in every institution in this society. And I'm telling you, that's what's also behind this neo-feministic agenda. you got to look into the Involvement of all these think tank mind control organizations. The Tavistock Institute of Human Relations in London is one of the biggest ones to research and look into and understand the agenda that they're pumping out there and why they want this neo-feminist agenda broadcast everywhere. They need the breakdown of the familial dynamic. They need the destruction of the strong man in society. People want to whine and complain about patriarchy. The neo-feminist agenda wants the destruction of the ability of men r rising up together to stand up against the tyranny of the state. That's one of its biggest overarching agendas. And most women are too mind-controlled to be able to see that. Because all they hear are the things that they're being promised. It's like all the idiots that voted this clown actor, Obama, into office. Oh, he's going to give us a phone. Well, hey, let's give up all of our freedoms to get that phone. That's so, it's so great what he's done with stolen money. He's given everybody free phones with stolen money taken by coercion and violence. Isn't that so wonderful? He's such a wonderful man. He's a great actor, I'll tell you that much great actor he, he pumps out the NLP the neuro linguistic programming pretty well he doesn't design any of that stuff you know he could act it out pretty well he could speak it pretty well I'll give him that let's look at the dynamic of how many women truth speakers are out there and folks look I am not on the attack I am not trying to say, and, and once again, I, I said this from day one, I said this from a few weeks ago, all right? I'm going to be labeled a misogynist because of what I'm talking about here on the air over the next few weeks. I already get it. I get that, and I don't give one damn how anyone perceives me. I don't care about how I am perceived. In the last segment, I was, you know talking about some of the think tanks that have been involved in the propagation of the neo-feminist agenda for purposes really of eugenics when it all comes down to it. This is what this is really leading to. And, you know, I mean, if you, we're going to look at, like, birth rates that, that are dropping in just about every, you know, civilized country on Earth, you know. We'll look at socio-sexual dynamics going on in both Western countries and the Far East, this is all coming up on future episodes. I mean, you have to understand how prevalent these think tanks influence is throughout the world. People who haven't studied the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations and its mind control techniques don't even know what's going on at all. And most people have never heard of it. Chatham House and Wellington House out of England, you know, their connection with the British Crown and the Royal Institute for International Affairs, which is directly underneath the Crown, you know, that most people will have never heard of these organizations. You know, you look at the social engineers who were directly tied in with those groups. Like Edward Bernays and Horace Mann and John Reese 
you know, and Walter Lippmann and the Huxley brothers, Julian Huxley, Aldous Huxley, Carol Quigley, you know, and what about the behaviorists that worked with all of these people? John B. Watson, B.F. Skinner, Ivan Pavlov. Uh, how about a huge behaviorist in the field of mind control through indoctrination? Wilhelm Wundt, you know, look up, look up Wundt's work when it, come to, when it came to bringing in the Prussian model into the United States, the outcome-based edu education system into the U.S., His connection with dark occult orders like the Order of Death, Skull and Bones. How about the Rockefellers Foundation involvement in all of this? The Rothschild dynasty's involvement with it through their ownership of publishing houses all over the world. The Council on Foreign Relations as a think tank propagating it. And that then you get to what I would say it might be the high, the top of the hierarchy when it really comes to the propagation of eugenics, period. And namely, the neo-feminist agenda of uh, how the neo-feminist agenda is propagating this, what I call, epi-eugenics operation. And that think tank is known as the Club of Rome. That's directly, di works directly with the Vatican. And, I mean, you're connected in with some of the highest levels of Satanism and the dark occult right there. First of all, let me tell you something, folks. When I was involved in Satanism, the organization that they continuously said that they wanted, that they looked at me as ideal for was the Club of Rome. And that if I were to be worked up into higher levels of the, the hierarchical network of dark occultism, the Club of Rome is probably what I would have been groomed for. And I'll, I'll be very open and honest about it, folks. Back then, I was a eugenicist. When I was a Satanist, my ideology was that the people who rise to the top of the pecking order in human society should rule humanity and cull the population. I wasn't about, like, I, I said I wasn't about slavery, meaning I didn't want to see direct human slavery, but I thought undesirables needed to go in order to improve society. And that's eugenics. That's saying we, as a more enlightened group of people, get to decide who lives and who dies. That's what eugenics is. So I was a eugenicist. The idea that it's a tough decision, but somebody's got to make it. And these eugenicists are who own and control the governments of the world, own and control the police departments, own and control the military, own and control the banking system, own and control the education systems, so-called education systems. You, know, you look at their ties to other orders like the Fabian Society, incremental socialism, bringing the idea of the Marxist revolution through the long cult march through the cultural institutions, put forward by the Frankfurt School as well. Gramsci's plan, study it, read about him. They recognized the, the idea of the, the workers' rebellion, you know, wor workers of the world unite, wasn't, go wasn't going to bring in communism into the world. It had been tried and it didn't work the way they had originally envisioned it. So they said, well, we need to take over political institutions, we need to take over educational institutions, we need to take over the media, we need to take over, you know, Hollywood and movie making, we need to take over, um, you know, military and police forces, everything. We need to especially get our point people into educational institutions like universities. Now go on the Fabian Society's website. They have a whole section for women to propagate the neo-feminist nonsense. You know, there, there's no link for men to do it, you know, because they're trying to sell this to women. They're out in the open about it, folks. It's, it's so blatant that they're out in the open with it. Because they know that the way to destroy a society is to get the minds of women. You get their, their mind first, the men and children follow. Hitler understood this perfectly. He, he, he said it out in the open. Women don't even understand the power that they have to influence the minds of the next generations. 
And th there is all the example that you really need to understand. How is the world right now? Well, it's a very good chance that l largely through who they decided to breed with and the value system they decided to teach to bring to their children instead of a true nurturing value system that is based on the non-aggression principle, it's an inescapable conclusion that women have largely made the world the way that it is. You know, like it's said in the movie Fight Club, we're a generation of men raised by women. Almost all single parents in the world are women. I'd say 98 to 99 percent of them are. Very, very few single fathers raising children, except in the examples where women pass early, earlier than the man. <clears throat> These think tanks' influence cannot be overstated, and most people know nothing about any of them. How many people have studied the Club of, Club of Rome, or the Fabian Society, or the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations? or social engineering in general, or behaviorism in general. A paltry handful, because they don't understand mind control, and they don't understand how mind control is directed by dark occultism. It's ancient, dark occultic psychology. And m most people just want their comfort level, and they want to say, I don't want to know about that, I want to look the other way. Because they're stuck in a satanic mindset, folks. That's where this ultimately comes from. It, co it grows directly out of Satanism. The satanic me, me, me mindset. The mentality of, what am I going to do for me today? All day, every day. I'm not going to look at any wider dynamics going on in the world. I don't care about any of that. Me, me, me. All day, every day. You know, I, I often ask the question... Where are the numbers of women coming forward and speaking out against the immoral system? Uh, there, there are several. But if you look at the totality when it comes to how many people are really truth movement activists and teachers, it, and how many women are involved in the truth movement in general, it is probably a minimum of a 10 to 1 ratio. Maybe even bigger maybe 20 to 1. It's between 10 and 20 to 1, easily. Maybe larger than that. I don't know. And, I mean, what does that say about the value system that most women are embracing? The vast majority. I don't want to make a blanket statement there. It shows you how deep the mind control and fear propaganda goes when it comes to the entire feminine portion of our society. Clearly, they are being targeted to love the state, to insist upon the state's protection, to think that the state is necessary. And this all comes about as a result of getting the children away from the family. This is, th this is what even classical feminism did very effectively. They didn't want women in the workforce decades ago to put them on equal playing ground with men. They wanted that so that there would be no one at home in a family dynamic so that the family would be forced to turn the children over to state-run education. And there would be no nurturing influence in the home to teach values to the child. The state would teach its values to the child. In doing that, you, you're also going to diminish work value by doubling workforce. You know, that, that was another thing. So, you know, they, they could pay people less. And you're creating more competition within society, further pitting men and women against each other. And you're creating a lot more corporate consumers at the same time. It, it had the effect, it, it worked on multiple fronts for the corporate masters. And that's all they're about doing. They're about creating the inauthentic man and the inauthentic woman whose value system is the dollar. And that's all they think about all day long 
from the minute they get up till they go to sleep. I'm talking about men and women here now. But I mean, you just think about, look, folks, just do this as a social experiment. I, I, here's my challenge and my homework for the week. Go and try to talk to any young woman, like a teenage girl, and just even try to see what type of a mindset that they are in. How they have been culturally conditioned. The, the type of pop culture that they are involved in, exposed to, their entire mindset of how they, they talk to each other, what they talk about. Just try to put yourself around that for a day if you can. And just absorb the mentality. Because most people won't, won't do that or don't have access to do that. But you do it and you tell me you're not horrifically...